Aria, welcome back to my channel for another Friday bonus video. I love Friday bonus videos because I completely take the pressure off of myself. As a YouTuber, obviously to be able to make steady income and be successful, I have to always consider if a video that I'm gonna put the time and effort towards is going to do well. Will people wanna watch it? But for Friday bonus videos, I just cut myself slack and I say, I already put out three videos this week that I think people will wanna watch. So now I'm gonna make something that I really want to make despite the fact if it will do well or not. So I just, I love doing them. It's all for fun and it's all just for bonus content for whoever is interested in it and whoever isn't, oh well. <laughs> I've made my matcha. I am going to sit down and have like a little cozy chat time with you. And today I want to talk all about Jancy the Label. If you don't know, if you don't know me or what I'm doing right now, I have decided to officially start a loungewear line and we have been in kind of like pre-development for the last four months now. I've been working on creating it and putting it together. And we have our first launch coming soon. And so with the launch around the corner, I've been getting a ton of messages about the products and the process. And so I just kind of wanted to answer everything in one sit down video. I should probably divide this into two separate videos where I actually talk about the products and then I'm honest about everything that went into it and the struggles and what it looks like to start a brand from scratch and everything that goes into that. But I figured even though this might be like a lengthy video or kind of a video of two maybe slightly different topics, hopefully if you're interested in either of them or if you're even just interested in the products themselves, you would be able to see why I've done things the way I've done them, the thought that's gone into it, and the reasoning behind everything. I also asked on my Instagram, what things you want me to cover in this video. I've been doing that more and more to make sure that I cover all the topics that you care about. If you don't follow me on Instagram, I'll put my handle down below right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull those up. All right, without further ado, let's talk about creating a loungewear line. <laughs> I guess let's answer the product questions first. I'll introduce you to the three things that we're launching for this first launch in case you're not familiar with them and talk you through the differences and why they are the way they are. So I have this sweatshirt. It has this adorable little stitched bouquet on it. This is actually a sample too. So this isn't even exactly right. This is for the shoot. They're all supposed to have this silk tag on the inside that says Jancy, which is our brand, but it comes in three different varieties, two different fabrics. So this is the Heather Gray and this is the oatmeal colored and these are both organic fleece. These are super cool. They're produced in a fair trade certified windmill factory. Windmills power this factory which is like the coolest thing ever. I'm gonna read you the verbiage. The fabric was grown, harvested, crafted, and traded in ways that improve lives and protect the environment. And it's 100% organic cotton body with a recycled poly ribbing, which is this part. So this is 100% organic cotton, and this is recycled, which has this like ribbing on the inside. And so both of these are the exact same material and they are fleece. And then this one is terry, which is a slightly different material. So I'm calling this the on the go. This is better to like sweat in. Fleece is the softest, most comfortable thing to lounge in. But I know some people wanted to like throw on this sweatshirt when they're going from the gym to the store or walking their pet or whatever. So I decided to do a terry as well. And this terry is organic cotton. The fabric comes from Portugal and then it's produced here in Los Angeles where all the seamstresses and everything for both of these are paid well above minimum wage. So very good salaries. I'm calling this, what did I call it? I think like a violet gray because this is technically still like a vintagey gray, but in comparison to the heather gray, it almost has like a purple undertone to me. So I'm calling this the vintage violet gray. And I wanted to show you the difference of the textures between the terry and the fleece so that you know. This is the terry. You can see the texture of that. This one you can be a little bit rougher on. And then this, I treat a little more delicately just to make sure that it maintains the maximum softness, like I hang dry this. And this is what the fleece material looks like. So I don't know if you could tell, but it's just like the softest. It's like cotton clouds. <laughs> and then the inspiration behind the design, I had an artist design this for me and then we had stitched it on to all of the different crew necks. And it's a bouquet of four flowers. Four flowers are a cherry blossom, a violet, a carnation, and a lily of the valley. And those are technically like the birth month flowers of four months that are special to me. So it's secretly sentimental without people knowing it. And those months are March, which it's actually my birthday, but that's not the reason 
I chose it. It's my parents' anniversary. That is in honor of them. Then January is Brooke's birthday, so that's in honor of him. May is my sister's birthday in honor of her. And then February is our anniversary, so kind of in honor of our marriage and future family. That is what the design means to me. And I figured, I'm sure a lot of you, one of those four months might mean something special to you too, cause so it could have secret sentimental value to you as well. But for those who don't, it's just a really beautiful design. One question I got a lot of, and I have made this public, I just haven't posted it yet because they're not for sale yet, is the price point of both of these. The Terry, this this one is $68 and then the fleece is $74. This is just significantly more expensive to produce which is why it has a higher price point being the fact that it comes from a windmill factory but I just thought that that was a really cool positive effect on the environment and worth the additional price point and something that I wanted to do as my first launch for the brand. Now that I've introduced the products to you and the price points to you there's a lot of really good questions about them like why the price point. Let's just jump into the questions about the price products. Oh good, I've already answered a lot of these questions. What's the price point? How did you come up with the design? And a really big point that I want to touch on that this is kind of starting to answer one of the most difficult things about deciding to create a company and someone asked why are they so expensive, which I could see for you, especially like my younger viewers, my college friends that this is a little bit of a higher price point and that has been the hardest thing for me deciding what I wanted to be as a brand. I had to decide if I wanted to be luxury and with that sustainable ethical quality staple pieces or if I wanted to be affordable and be a little bit more on like the fast fashion side and I decided that as a brand I would rather be more expensive but make a positive impact on the environment and the people and have something that lasts a long time and that people really love and might come at a higher price point than have something that might not be necessarily good for the world and for people, but just be able to sell quicker and sell more and make a bigger buck and a bigger profit. And so I decided to go the route of trying to make the best product possible. And I actually, <laughs> so I'll talk more about how this works when I get to the questions about the company, but my producer is a friend of mine for a long time. And she is honestly mad at me for, how low I've made the price points for these products. I have cut my profit margin down to so little for these fabrics. I'm trying to be as quality as possible and as accessible as possible and I know I can't be both. I'm trying my best to like meet in the middle and I'm taking the hit personally from the profit for the company to try to be able to do so. And this is like the baseline selling price that I could get without being in the red for this company. So that's where I'm at. That is the answer for the price point. And I would say like one of the hardest things and the things I'm most insecure about is that like I want to do everything. I have to pick and choose. So I have to decide to be a higher price point product in order to do the things that matter to me, if that makes sense. So I hope that answers that question. Also that to tell you, so a lot of you have wanted to know what products are coming next and I'm not gonna release them quite yet, but they are in the works. We actually already have some samples made and we're making some changes and some tweaks, but our summer launch, I'm so so excited about. There will be significantly more products and in a couple different styles and materials and just the fact of the matter is clothes that have less fabric such as summer clothes like t-shirts and shorts cost less to produce because you're losing less fabric so those will be at a lower price point but one of the materials that we're looking for for the shirts and the shorts that we might be making are completely recycled. So like they still have really great redeeming qualities to them and might be at a lower price point just because it's summer clothes and those are cheaper to make than sweatshirts and sweats. I would love to make sweats sometime too. We might be doing that for the fall. Someone wanted to know how the process was of samples and if it was discouraging and we went through so many samples so many samples. Like I actually pulled one that I still have that I have spilled oil on the front of. I need to wash it. <laughs> this is not washed. <laughs> but look at the stitch on this. I thought it would be fun to do a very light pink stitch and then we did the sample and it came out and you can't even see it. So lots of different things. Then we decided to do like a pink stitch on the oatmeal and 
the pink that it came back with was like a bright hot pink and so we had to then custom Pantone dye thread to match the exact same Pantone that we had wanted for the pink. So many different things happened. I can't even tell you how many samples we went through and then how many different materials we went through before we even found the materials that we wanted to use for samples. So I have this design stitched onto so many different material sweatshirts that then I would try on and be like, nope. Don't like the fit, don't like the feel, don't like the material, that's hard. A lot of people too wanted to know about the sizing and the size inclusivity of this first product. I'm super pleased that this product, first off, it's a unisex fit, so it fits looser and boxier than most women's fits. And I was able to get this up to size 2XL, which for a woman is probably like equivalent to 3XL. And so I will be carrying it in all of those sizes. And for future products down the line, the way it works when you're starting a company is you could use different materials from wholesalers or you could do cut and sew, which you actually have a designer design like almost like the blueprint of it and literally cut the fabric and sew it together for you and that costs so much money so I am not financially at the point to be able to cut and sew yet for my brand so I have to use materials from wholesalers that they have their set sizes so this one I'm super excited that I could find something that I liked that checked all my boxes and went up to size 2xl but I'm thinking for the summer launch the sizes are going to be a little bit more limited but my ultimate goal is to hopefully make enough of a profit and begin a financial point for the brand to where maybe in a year's time I could do cut and sew and have complete control over all the sizes it's a bummer to not have control over the sizes yet the fact of the matter is I don't have thousands and thousands of dollars to put into that so that's something that I'm working towards and would like to do in the future but I'm so pleased that our first product is comes in five sizes which is great. A question I get all the time is when will this become available? And just a peek to the thought process of everything going on on the inside, what I was going to do was first do a pre-sale. And how that would work is put it up for like a week and take orders and people would pay to basically like reserve one in their size and then go to production and produce it. And that could take four to six weeks. But with everything going on in the world right now, I didn't want to push a pre-sale in March which was when we were going to do it. I just felt it wasn't appropriate. And at the same time, this fabric is in such high demand that if we didn't place an order right then, we might have lost the opportunity to produce it for a couple more months. So I had to come to the really hard decision of, do I want to risk that and just push the pre-sale, Or do I want to put even more money into this and buy an inventory and go ahead and produce it myself and just pray that it sells out. And I decided to do that. I put in another $9,000 into inventory. <laughs> to be able to produce it now and it would take four to six weeks so at the time of the filming from this video I'm probably two to three weeks away from it being finished and then sell it so I would say we're about two to three weeks away obviously with everything going on in the world shipping is all so unpredictable some borders are closing like it's all so unpredictable so we don't have the exact date but I decided too that I would rather make people wait now before I had their money than take their money and make them wait because I feel like that's just not fair and I know that that could make some people anxious. Right now when I don't have anybody's money in hand I feel less stressed because if people complain I haven't taken anything from them so sorry <laughs> but if I had started a pre-sale and had money in hand I would feel like so stressed about the timeline and about things out of my control. I had seen the question asking the cost associated with starting a brand and I actually did a spreadsheet the other day to figure out how much I had spent so far on everything. I should pull it up but there's obviously quite a few fees associated with the website and the packaging. We spent so much money. I want everything to try to be done as well as possible and my producer was going to just you know ship these in normal poly bags and I said no that's unnecessary plastic waste. I want to splurge and find something good. I don't want to skip the details so I spent another couple thousand dollars on shipping materials that are 100% recycled and 100% recyclable. So like all of these little expenses add up. I decided I wanted to do stickers as like a free gift, kind of like how Glossier does it. And so I hired an artist to design those for me. I had to pay to get them printed. Obviously paid to reserve a studio space to shoot these things, pay a photographer. Luckily I had my friend's model, so I saved on money there. But all of these things add up and I am about 14, $15,000 in the hole. 
right now, which is terrifying. I'm trying to look at it as an investment and hopefully this first launch, if it sells out, I'll be able to replenish our savings, our personal savings that I had pulled out of for this. And then there will, there's not gonna be a lot of money left, but the little bit of money left will go towards the summer launch. And I honestly might put forth more of my own personal savings towards the summer launch to have a big enough inventory to justify even doing it. Because if I pay to just create like 30 or 40 of each item, the cost for each item is so high where if I put in a little bit more money and produce a larger inventory the cost per item will go down and then my profit would increase at least a little bit so that's where I am so for me right now for three products and starting a business from scratch from nothing everything involved I'm about 15,000 in real numbers very vulnerable, a little bit scary to admit online. I'm just hoping that it doesn't flop to where we lose money as a household, but at least replenish that and at least be able to use the tiny little bit of profits that we have to continue to produce really awesome products. The summer launch too, I'm really excited because there's a really cool message behind it. Ugh, I need to stop exposing things. I just want to tell you everything about it, but I can't yet. So I wanted to know my fears going into this and I'm terrified to launch. I'm terrified to launch right now. I'm like, it's fine. I've lost a lot of money, but like we haven't launched. So no one's upset with anything yet. I'm terrified that someone isn't going to like it or something will go wrong. And I know it's probably inevitable that at least someone won't like it. I am a chronic people pleaser and I've put so much time and effort and money and sweat and tears literal tears into this that it's going to, I'm going to probably take it too personally. And I know that it's inevitable. So I'm going to just have to deal with it and be a businesswoman and figure out what's best for everyone. So yeah, I'm terrified to launch. And I would say that that's the scariest thing for me right now, even more so than like the financial risk of it all, just because I want everyone to be happy and I want everyone to love it, but we're going to do it and we're going to do it soon. I think in a couple weeks, because obviously we're all staying at home right now. And so we need loungewear. And if it can bring a smile to someone's face, then I'm about it. And I want to try to figure out ways to give back with it too. In fact, I haven't made this public yet, but I'm thinking about during this first launch, donating a percentage of proceeds to foundations to help, whether that be like CDC or any foundation that helps nurses or doctors. If you have any ideas of anything that I can donate a percentage of these proceeds to, comment them down below. I would love ideas and I want to try to make a difference in this world instead of just sitting back and being scared, <laughs> whatever that looks like. So if you have any ideas about that, let me know. I'd love to. And actually the summer launch has a charity in mind that I'm really excited about <laughs> that I'm also gonna give a percentage of proceeds to. Do you plan on making matching sets? Maybe. <laughs> I'm so excited for summer. <laughs> What's the hardest part of setting up your business? I would say figuring out the legal aspects of it and I'm honestly still working on it. My biggest piece of advice if you're looking into something like this is hire an accountant and get a QuickBooks account. <laughs> I have been keeping track of every single receipt for every single thing, every like little design charge, every ordering the cards that will be placed in the packaging, every single thing I send to QuickBooks and it just automatically files it. And then I also keep a spreadsheet and it's gonna be a profit loss spreadsheet hire an accountant. My goodness, they will save you more money than you spend. Um, an accountant ha helped me with my 2019 taxes and was so helpful. And she knows about this and is helping me with that too. But I am still trying to figure out like the legal aspect of it. There's like seller's tax for different states and all of these things that I had never known about and I'm still trying to figure out and making sure I do it all right and legally because I don't want to get in trouble. But it's also like no one clearly states how to do these things. So trying to like find professionals and ask professionals and read the most confusing government websites. Whoever writes government websites, why do you write them so confusing? <laughs> I have questions. <laughs> but figuring out that has probably been the most difficult learning curve for starting a business. This is a fun question. Someone wanted to know why I chose the name Jancy the Label. And I'm sure you could probably tell if you don't know me that my maiden name is Jancy. So I'm Mikkel Jancy Smith, technically Christiane Jancy Smith. It's a long story. Accidentally, legally changed my name incorrectly, whatever. But my dad has two daughters and I love the name Jancy so much. And I wish I could carry it on for him. So I figured that naming this business kind of in honor of the Jancy family is my way to carry on the name, being the fact that I have a new last name now. And then if this business flops and I have a son, I'm gonna name him Jancy, cause that's a cool name for a guy, kind of, right? Whatever, either way, I'm gonna try to carry on the family legacy and the family name in my own way. So this is my 
try A. Someone wants a hint for the future launch and I'm gonna give a very cryptic hint. Ooh, how do I wanna give this hint? 1624, that's gonna be my very cryptic hint. Let's see if anybody can figure it out. You know a lot about me and my beliefs. That's another cryptic hint. Okay, I'm gonna end on one more happy question. Who has been your biggest supporter? And Brooke has been the most supportive person in all of this. He's placed so much trust in me and faith in me and taken like our family finances into account with this. It's crazy that I pulled the plug and decided to drop another $9,000 on the first round of inventory the exact same week that things got very unsure with our jobs. So that's been a little bit scary, but he's been like so sweet and supportive and he was actually the one that encouraged me to do this. I went to him with like the stress of, I don't know what to do because I don't think I can launch pre-sale right now. I don't think it's right, but we might lose everything we've been working on for the last four months. And he was like, let's just, let's just buy inventory. Like that's the right thing to do. And I was like, you realize that's gonna be like $9,000 for not a very big first launch, mind you. And he said, that's fine. Like, I believe in this, let's do it. So he's been the biggest supporter and I'm just so thankful that he's my husband and believes in me. And even if this fails, he's got my back. So I love you, Brooke, thank you. <laughs> that being said too, I didn't really mention the first launch size. It's not huge. The first launch is not huge and I'm hoping it sells out. And I think some of the more popular, like I honestly didn't think that this would be one of the more popular colors, but I had a lot of people say that this was their favorite after I ordered inventory. So I think I would have ordered more of this one if I had known that. I think this one's gonna sell out pretty fast. Also though, you can always size up in these. So if your size is sold out, this actually, this one is a size large, which for women's is kind of on the side of extra large. I got that for our shoot to make sure that I could have size inclusive models. And I wear this all the time and I love it. Don't feel like you have to be restricted to your normal size. You could size up. Um, these are oversized, so you could also size down. Just letting you know that for if the one that you have your heart set on is sold out in your size, this is significantly more flexible in sizing than other things like pants or t-shirts that are a little more fitted, things like that. Hopefully that um, encourages you if these do sell out really quickly and I would like to bring these back in stock. I might not bring them back in stock until like fall because I might want to put forth the majority of my time and energy towards the summer launch, especially since my profit margins are so small as previously mentioned. So that being said, this might be one of the only times that you get your hands on these products at least for a while. We're gonna have to feel that out and it might sell out pretty quickly because I did not have the funds to order a ton. So that's that. I hope that answers, there's so many good questions and I could just talk about this all day because I have four months of stories and stresses and tears and decisions. <laughs> but hopefully that at least answered some of the bigger and more common questions. I'm excited, I'm terrified, but we're gonna do this thing and hopefully you're all gonna be comfy and cozy very soon. I love you with my whole heart and I will see you in a video very soon. Bye.